the chariots of Yah. It is also even called the whirling wheels, right? We also know that the Messiah talks in regards to the Kodashim, the saints, the 144,000, right, of Israel. They will be caught up, right, by the light. Who is the light? The Messiah. So caught up, beamed up, if you will, to meet him in the air, in the clouds. And he's coming the same way in which he left the glory, with the clouds. See, in many contexts, the clouds are the chariots, and they had to describe things as best as they can with the vocabulary that they had in that particular time frame. That's why when they described things that they saw, they had to only work with the words that they knew back then. Wheels, cloud-like things, roundabout, and so forth. You have to understand what things really are and why you're being kept in the dark about it. You see, these supposed flying saucers are actually referred to in the Bible as the chariots of the Most High, hence why he is called the Elohim of hosts and of armies. He has a vast army of angelic creatures and beings, and they all take part in what's happening now as we near the finale of this system in these days. We know also that they're like a gleaming metal. Lightning protrudes forth from it in a great light, and they have eyes or lights all around them, and they follow the direction of the creatures. Where they go, the chariots go. And for those naysayers in denial, you can easily see that as in the scriptures. If you look in Ezekiel chapters 10, verse 13, as for the wheels, they were called in my hearing, what? The whirling wheels. And this is, this is describing the chariots in which was seen by Ezekiel, right? And if you look in Ezekiel 10, 9, And I looked, and behold, there were four wheels beside the cherubim, right? These powerful angels. One beside each cherub. And the appearance of the wheels was like sparkling beryl. Okay? Look at Ezekiel 1, 22. Over the heads of the living creatures, there was the likeness of an expanse, a firmament, a barrier of containment, shining like an awe-inspiring crystal spread out above their heads see that and then you see more in other texts right there look at ezekiel chapter 1 verse 13 as for the likeness of the living creatures their appearance was like burning coals black of fire like the appearance of torches moving to and fro so in a constant circular motion among the living creatures and the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning. And their wings touched one another. Each one of them went straight forward without turning as they went. So they could perform maneuvers that defy our natural laws in this particular realm because they're angelic beings and they're immortal. So they have power, and their power is given them from Elohim at the direction of Yahushua HaMashiach, you know, the one the world calls Jesus Christ, which is not accurate biblically. So let's focus on it. And the fire was bright and out of the fire went forth lightning, lightning. Hmm. Went forth lightning, huh? You see, Hollywood loves to portray truth in plain sight, but they give it to you from a biased narrative. So you call them aliens and you call them flying saucers, right? But you don't really know what they are. And that's why they are doing this, so that you can feel the need to take part in the war against these beings and be on the exact wrong side, which ultimately leads to the destruction of mankind, as you see portrayed in these movies. And they got this great light that comes out of them, and we know it's capable of beaming people up. Or catching them up because the Messiah makes it clear that when he returns the quota sheen, the chosen ones, which is the Hebrew Israelites, right? Especially in regards to the transformation of the 144,000 that would come forth from each tribe, what happens to them? They will be caught up, like beamed up to meet the Messiah in the clouds, in the air, and they will forever be with him that they forward and with Elohim and angelic beings. We also know that when they change, they will be transformed into spiritual creatures. 
and to the angels in which Yah promised to Abraham in regards to um, a good portion of his offspring. So it's funny that all of these concepts are in the scriptures, but then we disregard them or we see it along the lines of this whole alien conspiracy of the demons. And it's funny. They already fail and they're confined to the vicinities of the earth. How are they coming from the skies? Anything that they do would have to be through technology like NASA and the fake globe thing that people widely accept, even though they never seen it in their actual little experience. They just seen it on TV. So more than likely, the pattern will be presented that exact same way. You can't copy the glory of Elohim and of the Messiah. You can only do a, a, a form of deception and the ones that are woke know better. Now, it's possible to mislead if you allow yourself to be even a chosen as the Messiah may mention. But if you look and pay attention to the signs, then you can stay awoke as this day draws near like a thief in the night. So Yah is loaded with chariots, advanced technology, superhuman Marvel-like beings that you will see in a comic book. Where do you think these ideals come from, y'all? Nobody's just making it up. Every idea for the most part in these movie industries in Hollywood, rather is what they'll call science fiction, which is actually what they teach. Um, and the stuff that they say fiction really is real. Stuff that they say real is really fiction. It's, it's funny. It's a matrix. But they, they, they still all this from the scriptures. Period. Right? But y'all got chariots. These these wheels. These, these great chariot wheels. Whereas a wheel in the middle of the wheel or intersecting a wheel. A gleaming metal. Like that of a cloud. Lightning proceeding forth of it. Eyes or lights all around it. And they're taking part in the gathering of the 12 tribes of Israel. People just don't know the prophecy because they are so caught up in this religion aspect where man play Elohim to lord over their congregations to gain fame, riches, and influence in this world. And people don't like to admit that when they know that they're caught up in it. But you have to understand what's really going on. Then you can understand why the world is locked down, why everything is going completely downhill and it's getting worse and worse. Storms, volcanoes, extremely active tornadoes, earthquakes, diverse places, rumors of wars is I mean, it is so long overdue and it's getting much worse. The whole world is locked down right now. And then all of these orbs and lights in the sky hovering above people's houses at night in the morning time, various colors. Now you've had a government admitting that UFOs are actually real because they can't contain a secret anymore. See, the skies are to give signs. These signs equate to the last days, the end of the world when it was near. See, you don't need a date when you know the season. You understand what I'm saying? And that's what the scriptures was always trying to make clear. We gave you everything to know and it was upon you. We just didn't give you the date. But we too busy trying to figure out the date. <laughs> Crazy. So the chariots take part in the gathering of the scattered Israelites that has been, by means of the Atlantic slave trade, placed in the four corners of the earth. See, there will be a regathering of the Israelites, and they were not given up on as a people because every one of them didn't turn. OK, and even while they was far off, he still sent the Messiah to atone for the flaws that was taking place because he's in the everlasting covenant, which was promised to Abraham with the Hebrew Israelites, and they will never be rejected as a nation for Yah is not a liar and a covenant means a promise. And he made a promise that they will be given dominion over the world and they will be his chosen forever. So even if you deviate from the purpose, you may be killed off, but it can proceed forth through your offspring. Israel will never be rejected as a nation. That is the biggest lie that was ever taught throughout religion. And also another big lie is the commandments. They are never done away with. OK, ever. They misinterpret these scriptures horribly, and then they try to justify it by running to their doctrines and literature. But the reality is completely opposite. We touched it on my other videos where the scriptures actually widely contradicts both concepts. But the chariots, guys, are coming. In many cases, they're already here, and they're revealing themselves all the time because the day is now upon us and like the season, okay? It's upon us. And you know when you see these things, he is near at the doors. Just like when you see that fig tree, you know that summer is near when it starts to blossom. When you see these signs, what do you say? The Messiah. Know that he is near at the doors. The chariots is, is a very big sign. And you see him in the skies all the time. You just don't know. Right? 
So they're whirling wheels, shining like spark burrow crystals, firm in expanses, so to speak, over the heads of the four living creatures. Creatures that are not normally appearing like us, although one has the appearance of a man. They got various forms, though, guys. You have to understand that. But UFOs along the lines are very much in the scriptures. Flying discs in the scriptures. Creatures that are very much more advanced and different than us in the scriptures. Rather it be the angelic beings or the fallen angels that's already con confined down here. You see, Satan them come from the ground. The angelic bodies come from above the firmament. And you can't escape this realm. Because it's a flat enclosed environment, stationary, geocentric, and you're being perpetuated into a lie to justify this whole narrative of aliens of, from other planets and so forth. They lied to you about science and didn't tell you what you really were and where you really live on. That's a whole nother video. But it's so much stuff here, guys. And um, people just um, don't really want to hear the truth because they so much in their ways and in their religions and their customs and so forth. And you can't tell them nothing. But the chariots, they real. And they coming to gather the chosen, the quote of shame, the 12 tribes of Israel, the chosen, the remnants. And the Gentiles can be saved too if they choose to exercise faith in his chosen and in a real Messiah, Yahusha, and in Elohim, Yah. But you have to step aside from these prejudices and this hatred that you have for his chosen people. You have to really change your ways. Look at Ezekiel 1 4. As I look, behold, a stormy wind came out of the north and a great cloud. See how they always say cloud when they associate with the chariots? With brightness around it and fire flashing forth continually, and in the midst of the fire, as it were, what? A gleaming metal. Come on now, guys. This is elementary. You know what this is. It's the chariots, guys. It's the chariots. And it's really not hard. See, awakening is happening and people are realizing who they are. And this was always prophesied to happen after the final captivity reached its climax. And if you don't know about that, prophecy was given to Abraham about that final 400 years. That was not talking about Egypt. You don't even need ships to go from the homeland in which they come from to Egypt. You can walk there. They even did it with the Messiah. This was talking about the full extent of the curses of Deuteronomy chapters 28. And it wasn't Egypt. It was Misraim as the correct term. And it was telling that they were going back into a bondage and a slavery like they did in Egypt. Because he made it clear that when they left actual Egypt, they would never see the Egyptians again. That's why I say, by the way, where have I spoken to these, you will see it no more. And then you'll be sold to your enemies as bondmen and bond women to be slaves. That's the Atlantic slave trade in which they were scattered to the four corners of the earth. And they will be there until the gathering, into the return of the Messiah. See, people don't know prophecy because they believe in religion and they get in a whole new story. They saying he gave up on his people and broke his promise, lied about the covenant because they were so bad. And then he accepted Gentiles who was far worse and replaced his people and didn't care no more. And they also teach that he don't care about his commandments, although he got so mad at the Israelites that that's why they got scattered too. It's so funny, right? And then they change their names, change their origins, change their races, assume their identities, colonized, raped indigenous, created a whole mutation, and now everything is so different than what it was. Whole another video. But the awakening is happening, and his children are waking up. They're being humbled, right? While others are being blinded by their pride. And the alternate of their DNA will happen. Because soon, the quota shame will arise from the ashes, these dry bones. And they will be given back their dominion, their kingdom, and their Elohim, and their Messiah. So, it's a beautiful story, and it all connects, just like that ladder in Jacob's dream that goes right to the homeland of Yerushalayim, right? The chariots are here already, and they're going to keep coming more and more, and people are going to keep freaking out. What is that in the sky? What is this? Oh, man, it's doing some weird maneuvers. And now the U.S. government admitted it's real. And nobody seemed to be connecting the dots. They'll scream hoax, fake, no, no, no. Because they believe in this physical realm as if we the only things that exist. Although we keep acting as if we believe in the Bible. It says that it's creatures aren't like us. Angels are creatures. We got four living creatures that's always in the midst giving praise to Elohim and to the, the Lamb, the Messiah. Yet we act like we the only ones. Are you serious? We got demons, demonic entities of the Nephilim giants. Then we got the, the Neanderthal species that was once here. Now they mutate into a lot of the forms of people you see today. And also, you got fallen angels. Why do we act like we know everything? Come on now. We really don't know that much, y'all. We can't even tell you how the pyramids 
really was um, formed. And how did they gather each of those stones that were over a ton and set them up in that perfect, precise position? Or the stone hinge heads. Can we stop acting like we know everything? Because the reality is we don't know nothing. We don't even use the majority of our brain in a large capacity. We don't even understand the full spectrum of the pineal gland, right? The chakras, the seven spirits, in which Yah also has seven spirits or rocks, chakras. It's, it's amazing. But the chariots are coming and in many cases already here because the gathering is taking place. The judgment is already upon the nations as prophesied to happen after the 400. And you are nearing this awakening and this transition and this shift. And you know it's happening because everything is going straight downward because that's what's supposed to happen. Because it's the birth of a nation taking place right now. And Israel, you know, the people that are despised and hated and treated with so much racism and, and always down and not believed, they will rise from the ashes. And everyone will see the truth that the scriptures really was putting out there. And they will transform into the likeness of the angels. And they will be caught up by the chariots to meet in the clouds. The Messiah is coming like the sun from the east to the west in the skies, the clouds. There are signs in the skies. The, the skies are your, your calendar. Seasons, times, dates. It all goes upon that. You just don't worship it. And people will be caught up and changed. And the concept is all over the place. We just don't accept truth because we believe in lies. And we place our brain in a box. And that's what religion is designed to do. Don't believe that. You can't think this. You're supposed to not do that. And they tweak the scriptures and they do not tell you the truth about this story. But if you read it without the narrative of a religion, straight through, take your time. You'll see that it's the truth. That it's about one people, one nation in which the other nations can cling to to find their hope. Believe in this Messiah, right? And in Elohim, which is the maker of the heavens and the earth and all things and the angels and so forth. It's a synchronicity, a frequency, a balance in which we all can share. But it's arrangements and it's levels to it in which all people have different positions and rankings. But all for the common good of peace, perfection, love and unity. A lot of people don't really get that, though. But. The shift is coming, y'all. It is coming and it's a beautiful story, but the war must take place first. And that's why the chariots are nearing. And all these things was talked about in the Bible. And then this beautiful city, Zion of gold for the Israelites. It will be the ruling system over the entire world in which they will be blessed or cursed if they curse the Kodashim, which is the saints. Saints is the set apart. The set apart are the 12 tribes of Israel, the Hebrew Israelites, if you will. Okay. The humble and the ones that are going back and living things right. And that's why you keep seeing these visions of these chariots, these spinning wheels, these gleaming metals in which Yah is in control of. They all over the place. And the cherubim is, is leading and they follow them to and fro. Like you have to understand these things if you want to really grasp what's going on. Okay. So UFOs, what they'll call them, is really... Um, the unidentified objects are the chariots and they are identified in the scriptures, especially in Apocrypha and the removed books. They give you a little more insight too. And Enoch, um, the, the creatures that are unlike us are angelic beings. And in other cases, they can be fallen angels or demonic beings. Um, and that's why I say they want to mark people and get their DNA altered and get them cut off from the Messiah and the Lamb, which is the Lamb and Elohim, because they're going to alter their DNA and make them one completely 100% with these demonic devil-like beings and then they're going to use them to create a super army to take part in fighting against the lamb which will ultimately lead to their great slaughter but you have to understand what's really going on on both sides DNA will change rather it be you get in the mark of the beast and you turn to a devil or you part of the quota shame of the tribes of Israel which is the Negroes scattered abroad through the Atlantic slave trade and you have your DNA altered to become one of the angels it's the same story, both sides. One's good, vibrations, one bad. One's light, one's darkness, it's so forth. It's pretty simple. But the chariots are upon us. And I just want you to get that. And there's various creatures in the midst of y'all at all times anyway. So just um, pay attention, guys, because times will get very much weirder than what they are. Understand who the real Messiah is and who is the anti-Messiah. 
understand that its description does matter and a person's heritage does matter and a person's color and race does matter because it makes uh, up who they are, their experience in which they face. And you can kind of feel things from their standpoint based upon their human experience as well. And it's part of their pathological being. You can't subtract who they are and then say that race don't matter, but you love them. It's, it don't work like that. And we know that religion was deeply rooted in white supremacy. Hence, they concocted an idea to create new versions of how they want them to look to appease their own stereotypes and racism. But the real Messiah is the reason why he has eyes of a flame fire and it's red because he's angry when he look because he wants to avenge what happened to him and that of his people and set the world free from this imprisonment that is being perpetuated by these elites and a lot of the people that are descended from them. You have to understand these things. Then you can get what the scriptures is talking about. You can understand how Yah really look, how the Messiah really look, how the chosen people really look, and why the chariots play a part in this, because they will gather them for the four corners of the earth. If you don't know about the curses, you don't get the point of this story, so you don't know what I'm talking about. You don't know about the 400 years. You don't know about none of this stuff, I'm sure, if you don't do your research. But you have to understand that it's going to be like some Avengers, Marvel, DC type stuff happening. Transformations, people altering, superpowers proceeding forth from people, awakening, um, the full extent of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit changing people and giving them the ability to, to prophesy, to see visions, to dream dreams, to, to drink deadly things and then not harm them. All of these things are written in the Bible and was told by the Messiah to take place in the last days. Right. So you have to understand this stuff or you will not get anything that i'm talking about so um understand that the chariots are biblical they're going to call it aliens and they're coming to kill off humans in the earth which to an extent is going to be some truth to that the evil ones and if you believe in that concept of planets and globe and anything that's going to come in and like the fallen angels ain't already down here confined then you're going to probably be justified to get the mark of the beast to get the vaccine of the covid uh, or, or to um, help fight on the wrong side with the nations against um, these beings that are coming down here, which are actually the angelic beings. So it's just something to think about, y'all. And if you need more scriptures, um, I'm going to do another video with all scriptures all the way through about the gathering of the 12 tribes of Israel. And then you can really see that they were not forsaken as a people, nor were the commandments done away with in a religion stole the um scriptures and attached their pagan customs to it to push these ideologies to get them power and they got various forms to appease the many different um ways that people might want to go because all religions some allow this some allow that you can kind of shop it like them all but much love y'all the chariots are coming the messiah is coming the prophecy is being fulfilled and israel shall arise but the war must happen first much love. Keep y'all heads up. All praise to the Most High. Hallelujah. Praise be to y'all. And um, Shabbat Shalom.